There's some people on the internet out there that ask like, hey, what driver do you use to make your controller work? How do you do get this and that working on Linux? And for gamers, sometimes that's an important thing is like, because some games work better with controller. And Steam is great and all. But some things, sometimes you don't want to have to run Steam to run like every controller because the Steam input is very, very like good and robust. It's just sometimes like you just want to play a game that doesn't require Steam and having to go through Steam to do it and run it through there can sometimes be inconvenient because then you have to add all this stuff to your library that you don't want to do. So for some people, it's like, what do you use? Well... Linux controller drivers are pretty robust out of the box, but sometimes it, you want to have like something that will configure it. You can configure easily without like having to do too much, oh, fancy work. And so in those cases, what I would actually suggest is rather than Steam, we can go with SC controller as our input daemon driver whatever so this project started out as a steam controller oh driver that or program that you could use to map your steam controller to but it has since expanded to other controllers including xbox and so on so you can plug in about any controller and map it to inputs and things in this program so it does have like the haptic feedback support and a bunch of other things that are very much the same as in Steam. So it's akin to um, the Steam configurator in a sense, but it has, but it's not like as bloaty and big. So you're not having to open this big program that you navigate with controller. It's really easy to navigate with um, a mouse and keyboard and all. And... One thing I would recommend is the Ryochen fork of it is actually more up to date than the Kozek fork. So I'd go with that one instead. And that's if you're running an Arch based distro, if you install SC Controller Git, that is the one that you're going to get in that one. And so it does have a few other fixes that um, the Kozek version doesn't have. Such as, like, some of the, oh, support for DualShock and stuff that weren't implemented otherwise. And some other, oh, hooks as well for CE Moo. But, so, what does it look like? So when you pull it up, what it's going to do is it is actually going to try and run a daemon to capture the USB devices. And somewhat, um, sometimes Steam will conflict with it, but usually it's able to do it if you don't have a controller plugged in. But um, it will actually take it away from Steam. And so if you're wondering, so if you run like a Steam controller or a DualShock controller that has touchpads and all, you may be wondering why it's acting like an Xbox controller. Because out of the box, this comes with Xbox controller as a profile, mapping profile. And so if your Steam controller or whatever is running like an Xbox controller, when you have this running in the background, that's why. So what it does is when it first runs, it pulls up SCC Daemon, which is another oh Python backend for the Steam controller. So this is built on top of... an. Another standalone O oh, driver for the Steam controller. But this is just a fancy GUI interface that lets you configure it without having to do it manually. So it'll all basically run in the background. So you, the SC controller icon is here in the corner. And you can just click it to pull it back up. And you can actually turn that emulation off in the background if you don't like want to have it active but you still have the daemon running. You can still have the option of letting Steam take over and then turning it back on later. It'll just turn off the daemon in the background. So out of the box, it comes with the Xbox controller profile, which is pretty basic. 
comes with high precision camera, which does the trackball like the Steam controller does with in Steam when you're playing certain games that support dual controller keyboard and mouse. And then it's got the desktop, which is pretty basic, which is like in essence like lizard mode by default. So a couple of them that I've actually got that I've set up myself is I was trying to do an auto clicker one. So that's what this is. This is the one that I basically run in for the Game Boy emulators across the board. So it may say Gambit, but I basically run it in like any Game Boy, Game Boy Advance emulator. And it's got a couple shortcuts for specific things as well in the menu over here on the touchpad. So it does have that same feature of the touch menu. And then this is what the Project 64 Nintendo 64 configuration looks like that I would use or anything that way. For the most part, I think most of the games I run out of RetroArch, which basically takes care of it, so I can run the Xbox controller layout and be fine. So first thing um, with it is you've got a lot of options that you can play around with. So you've got the on-screen display that will show up. So I think if I... So right out of the box, um, it's good if you have the Steam Controller receiver plugged in, it's going to recognize it, and it'll automatically connect your Steam Controller. So it will automatically recognize that out of the box um, by default. So if I go to, I think, Gambit. So it doesn't want to work with me for some reason, but if you saw the menu momentarily, that's basically it comes up with a menu on the touch menu. So if I, I think I can actually, let's go with this one. And we will go with, let's go with the touch menu. We'll do radial. So you see, you've got the, basically the same options as otherwise. You've got the horizontal menu, the list. So you've got side to side. Or you've got up and down, you've got the grid, which is kind of like that hotkey grid that you would have in, so you could like, kind of like in Steam how you can do some of that stuff with like a hotkey grid. You can do the same thing here in the radial, which I think is self-explanatory. And then we will create a new menu. And we'll add what? So we add an item. So it, it's got a pretty good list of icons out of the box. And you can even add your own. So let's add. Um, pictures. Well, that, that, well, just a second. Actually, no, I want. Okay. Um, hello. Oh, so I, you basically have to add it through the folder. So if I wanted to. Let's add icon. Create folder, custom. Can I take that back? Okay. Can, does it come up? Yes, it does. So that's how you add your own custom icons. And then Let's go with help for that one. And then grab a key, F1. So 
you either have the option of like selecting through here what buttons it does or you can do grab a key and basically press any key and it'll do it. So the toggle button here basically says when I press it once what it is it'll hold it and then when I press it again it'll let it go. So for those ones where you like you don't want to have to worry about oh holding it down for the time you can just toggle it so like if your game doesn't have like a sneak toggle you can do it through here um, you've also got the repeat which basically puts it on like a turbo and so you can I believe you should be able to mess around with it doesn't look like it but so that will add it to the list and then we add another item we won't do an icon this time Let's see, special action. So we can execute a command. And let's go with, or no. Um, let us set it to turn off keyboard, or turn off the controller. And then custom action. So you can sit here and go through and like put together your own custom actions. So much like if I were to do that, it does that. So you could have like a whole string of actions here. So I don't have any set up currently, but you do have that option of like doing a whole string of actions for it. So actually let's edit item. Let's do... space and then go like that and then save and then random menu okay so in here you do have options as well so the confirm button we could go with let's see This was on the left pad, so yeah. Left pad press. Or they've actually got it right here. And then you can cancel it when you lift. So you could either set it so that it's it'll stay up once you like start going into it until you press one of these buttons, or you can do it the way Steam does it by default in there. And then you can set the position of the menu anywhere on the screen. So I could set it from the right side. And then it would show up like that. Except it doesn't want to. I don't know. The on-screen menus have been kind of an interesting thing to deal with. But... So we can change the style up a little bit. We can go with, uh, let's go with green, no, blue, yellow. Let, let's take it red. Maybe, no, nothing. So, nothing. I don't know. Doesn't like me. The uh, it could be an issue with Xorg or something else. I'm not sure, but doesn't seem to like me anymore as much. But you do have like a bunch of auto switcher options for switching layouts and things like that. So if like you set it up so you matched a window title or the window class, it would pull up a certain profile. Or it would turn the controller off, or restart the daemon, and it would basically look for that. And so you do have that option as well, so if you don't want to manage it so much, it somewhat does work. You do have to like play around with it, but you will. it is kind of finicky. I don't think it exactly looks at the focused window, so when it 
looks for it, it's gonna fight you somewhat, I guess. I haven't played around with it much. I've always switched manually when I need it, so that's its own little surprise. So you can disable the emulation when GUI's closed. You can display the message about new upgrades. So if a new version comes out, it'll like display in the bar here. Like, hey, there's a new up version you should update. After you've updated, it said, hey, this is a new version you've updated to. Check it out. And so... It's pretty robust. So if I go, so yeah, you can see that um, this menu works. The touch menus, for whatever reason, don't. So um, let me turn off the controller. So the other thing one might want to do is add new controllers. So this here is actually um, me playing around with um, the N30 Pro. I have it in Mac OS mode, and it came up as a Sony controller. So when I plugged it in, it came up as that. The N30 Pro, the N30, yeah, the N30 Pro um, in the past hasn't been all that nice about it. It, like, broke the program significantly, but it seems to have been fixed. So I had to remove my controller um, configs from it. So, for demonstration, I've got the um, SNES USB controllers that I need to add back, and my oh, Switch controller as well, the wired one. So if I nab those out of their dusty corners... So, when you go in... To configure it, it's not going to come up right away for any other controller. So, Steam controller support by default, I believe, should be on. You might have to enable the DualShock 4 support. You might have to enable HID and FDEV. So, like I said, the Linux drivers are already pretty robust out of the box. This works really well for configuring controllers for specific programs. Or if your controller isn't supported by the game, it allows it to run in as an Xbox controller and be detected that way. So like for things like Lutris, it works really well with in tandem with that as well. Um, I ha don't think Lutris really has anything for controller configuration. But we'll go in and we will register a new controller. So what it does is it looks for any controlling... HID devices that look like a controller. If you don't see your controller, what you can do is show all devices and it'll have this nice big list of stuff. But mine obviously showed up, so I can go like this. Can go next. And then all I have to do is basically configure it such that, okay, we've got asymmetrical or if you've got a single stick thing going on or just the SNES whatever so we go with this one because this is more akin to the switch controller we switch to this button layout because it's more akin to what we're working with either one of those work they've got duplicates for some reason they've even got like your generic gamepad setting or you know your PlayStation one but so we pull that up, and then it's going to, like, okay, play around with stuff, make sure it all works. So as we press buttons, basically the joysticks will calibrate as we do it to the full extent. D-pad does the same thing. This is pretty, like, default standard behavior. Um, so with this particular Switch controller, I do have grip buttons, but those are remappable. So I manually map those. So it's the um, A power, one of the A power controls. I've showed it up off previously. But then we go like plus. So plus is in the wrong spot. Minus is in the wrong spot. So where is it? So we press that button and it turns red for like, hey, I've got nothing assigned to me. What the heck? And then we do the same thing over here. And it does the same thing. So... Where are our triggers mapped? 
Okay. So the left trigger and then the right trigger. So we've got that set up. We've got those. Um, our home button is mapped to the wrong spot. So pressing the stick. And then we've got to change that one as well. So we've got those worked out. So somewhat, yes, it can take some configuration, but for a lot of things, it'll work out of the box. So we've got B, A, Y, X. I think X is our only one that was in the right spot. So we go here, go here, and go here. And we've got all our things configured up correctly, all the joysticks in the right spot, D-pad, pressing stick, that. Um, this does have a screenshot button on the controller, but we don't worry about that because it's fine. <laughs> so we've got that all set up. So it pulls it up here and you can see that the controller image changes with it too. So, and now I could run this with my emulators or whatever, and the mappings try and map it to your controller, adapt it to the controller based on what you have in. If you do have touch pads that you're using that way, and your the contr other another controller you plug in doesn't have that, then it won't be able to map the touch pads. But you can it'll try its best to map the rest of the buttons to the best of its ability. So, now, that's what it looks like when you unplug it. So when you plug it back in, it'll basically come up, give it a second, and it'll do that number. It'll switch around to automatically once it detects that specific controller you plugged in. So for my SNES U type USB controllers, these come up as like a generic whatever HID device thing. And so we go back in, controllers, register new controller. So it comes up as USB gamepad. So some t it can be hit and miss, like I said, with them. But so pretty simple to set up. It does not have the menu button on here. So that one is one that you will basically go without on this one. So if we hit the D-pad, nothing happens. So we go left and right, up and down. So this is what I had to do last time too. So select and start this are set B, A, Y, X. Okay. Can we get... Our shoulder buttons don't want to cooperate with us. So we can do that, but some games require us to press both of those at the same time too, depending on it. So I won't mess with that. Um, so some buttons don't seem to want to like let you do anything, which is sad. So trying and messing around and highlighting things it doesn't quite want to work. So we do with this the best we can. And we're stuck with that. So, like, no Game Boy stuff. But, yeah. There are some programs that will support um, the controller just fine. So, if I open up MGBA, for example. If it wants to open for me. Okay, 
So what we go in here and do is we go into settings, go into controller. So you see the USB came back, comes up auto magically. And I believe we are actually pretty steady already. So if we were to load up, do I not have any recents? That's sad. A few moments later. Not all the buttons work, so you might have to remap it. But for some things, yes, it does work quite well. But basically, SC controllers should cover most of your bases that you need. If you're like one of those people that has an Xbox controller just, it works really well. So, let me just do one more. So if I pop my N30 Pro into Xbox mode... Which this controller is really good about is being able to basically do multiple things at once. And then we go with... Yeah, I think we want it that way. So it basically pops it straight out of the box. Right out of the gate, it's ready. Ah, oh, shoot. That's the one that broke it. Okay. <sighs> yeah, Um. I thought it was fixed, but it turns out you just have to enable it in the right mode and it won't. Yeah, it does its own thing. But now that we started that one. Oh, great. Okay, so what we do in this case is we go X kill. And then we go open it up again. Okay, settings, controllers, we want to remove that one. Then we go on back into the Apply mode. And it works just fine. So. Sometimes you have to work around things. Um, yeah, just be aware of that. But it will work pretty well. So, if you found this helpful, if you were wondering, like, how can I find a good way to run my controllers without, like, having to open up Steam every time or needing Steam for every game, this is a really good program for that. It does a lot of things for you without you having to think about it. Some programs do it just fine, but like most of the stuff you're going to have, the drivers are going to be fine out of the box on Linux. It's just your configuration that you're worrying about for the most part and making sure that your program detects the controller. And that's where the issue comes into. And so this is a very visual, easy way of making that configuration happen and it's got a lot of configurability that you can do with it so yeah um all the links and stuff are down in the description i do stream on twitch and that not regularly throughout the week so you can check me out there and ask any questions and i'll see you all later